This week's episode of Dude Soup is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash RTTV. Hey everybody, welcome to the Funhouse podcast. My name is James Williams and I'm joined by my two guests this week, Lindsay Washburn. What's up? <laughs> and Omar <laughs> De Armas. De Armas. De Armas. De Armas. Um, thank you guys for joining me this week. Um, we are going to be basically kind of wrapping up the year with this one. How did I describe it? Uh, I described it to you guys in a very specific way. Um, but we're going to be kind of be doing a year roundup. There's a couple things I want to talk about um, specifically. Um, maybe a couple reoccurring segments that I'm somewhat known for um, that we're, of course, going to get to. Um, first things first, though, Lindsay, we were ha- we were continuing our slots Vegas slots conversation, which we started. This is something that we have discovered a common love of, and that's our love of slots. And so you have the slot machine app. What were you going to do for the course of this episode? So I I just set it to auto spin for anybody who's just listening. Mm -hmm. The game is auto spinning, and I have 20 million coins. I'm betting 75,000, and we'll just see if I have money or, uh, well, it's not money. It's fake money, but... Mm -hmm. If I have these little Vegas chip coins, see how much I have at the end of it. Perfect. Well, great. We'll check in on this later. <laughs> Perfect. I, many... da- I downloaded this the week, like literally after the episode we recorded because I wrote it down in my mm-hmm. notebook, and then I downloaded it. Perfect. Last yeah. week. I mine's still on how many my of those phone, kinds of apps exist. But, uh, the slot machine apps. How many? Yeah, oh. yeah like a billion of them, right? And Probably, they all play yeah. themselves well, like that. There, there was someone who was watching oh, like that. There was I got a bonus. Wow, that was quick. Um, there's someone yeah. who uh, was watching that other uh, podcast that we did a couple weeks ago, and then messaged Lindsay and I and said that they are a programmer who makes slot machines, and linked us to their like Vimeo page. They're basically their reel of all their work and all the slot machines they worked on, and it was very cool to watch. Because they were like, yeah. I can just sh- program the ones to show you the bonuses that happen. And we're like, oh. And then Lindsay and I were like, should we do a Funhouse slot machine? And then we both got really excited until I realized we would get no, not a single cent from any of that. And it would be probably the most discouraging thing we'd ever seen. But um, so, yeah, Lindsay's going to be rolling the slot machine. Another thing, we're going to talk about some stuff, too. Um, Omar's playing Cyberpunk, and I want to kind of ask him what his experience. Oh, you got the link. Oh, cool. wow. Yeah, I got so many. Holy of them. cow! Cake. Um, I was just showing you. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I wanted to t- talk to Omar about his experiences, how he's enjoying Cyberpunk, how it's running for him because the game is getting a lot of flack. And I'm not the kind of I don't want to dunk on a dev after they killed themselves for nine years trying to make a game that and, seriously and, so and, long and, and and make it work on consoles that and computer software that span a decade. Um, Mm -hmm. but uh, I do want to hear your experiences, but I also want to let you guys know if you're watching us live, I got the chat open and, um, we're going to take some questions as, as they come. Uh, you can, you guys can shoot us questions because this is kind of going to be an end of the year wrap up. Um, and, uh, and yeah, let's just have a nice, cool cash podcast. Omar. Cyberpunk. Oh, did you get hacked? Yes. Or the, I can't tell if you got hacked or if there was like an encoding error. <laughs> there. Uh, so I feel bad. I don't want to spoil stuff in this game for anybody. So I'm going to do like side stuff. But some things might be happening on my screen that happen later in the game. Okay. So how far? So I apologize for that. I had in. Are you approximately? Uh, I've been playing for hours. I don't know. Is there a way to check that? I don't know. I just, I'm I didn't sh- know. There's gotta be a progress meter or like yeah. a main story meter or something like that. Oh yeah. So I'm 60% through the V story. Oh, okay. So you are uh, pretty deep in there. Uh, so yeah, pretty deep. Yeah. 15 into the samurai story and then 20 into whatever this is. Clock's know. ticking. Don't know what that means. And yeah, you're playing on PS five. Yeah. Right. So I'm playing on PS five. I bought it on PS five because I figured I'm going to want to sit on my couch and play this with a TV. Also, I sit in front of my computer mm-hmm. all day, every day. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fucking sit in front of my computer anymore. So I'm going to play this game on the couch. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> a different screen. I don't know if that was my best decision ever <laughs> for playing this game. Oh, on, to play it on PS5? Honestly. Yeah. Oh, okay. You think you'd rather... Like right now, it it's PC? running. Yeah, because it's running fine right now. Mm-hmm. But it ca- crashes constantly. Oh, really? 
like oh, like every crazy. 45 minutes it'll crash mm. or something. And then I have to go through the whole boot up process for the game again and get going. But while it's playing, it plays awesome. It doesn't really look like that on the stream right now, probably because it's because it's I'm sending a 720 signal or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, it looks good. It's smooth. There's no frame rate issues or anything like that. Like the combat's not fucked or anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, it crashes constantly hmm. on PS5, which is a very different experience than I've, what I've read for PS4s and Xbox Ones. Yeah. What do you, I mean, I don't think any of us are game devs enough to really know, but what do you think is like causing the issues here? Because like there are still games like GTA 5, which are just utterly massive, you know, like yeah. they are, these are massive games and they are so old and and but, you know, you can pick them up now and still be impressed by what's in it. I know everyone's going on and on about how beautiful this game is and like the lighting and the ray tracing and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, yeah. But like, you know, also John Smith always goes on and on about how next gen doesn't just mean better graphics. It means like computer com processing power to make yeah. the world more real. Right. Yeah. I think that's like the biggest thing that it's missing from the PC version right now is just like computational power mm -hmm. that the older consoles don't have mm -hmm. and that's why it runs poorly because it can't it can't just process all the info mm -hmm. there is a lot of shit happening in this world yeah you know how like gta feels not i, I wouldn't say real or whatever right but it feels full uh -huh. most of the time yeah, when you're yeah. doing stuff there's people scattered everywhere like that is very much the case here too okay. like there is just shit going on everywhere mm -hmm. let me pull up the map there are so many things. This, man, I hate seeing that. I hate it. Oh, my God. I hate <laughs> looking at that. I don't know how you feel it, about it, but... Because it's too much? It's is too it, much. Is it overwhelming? It's too much. It is yeah, it is, it is a lot. Um, this, this It also has, like, really interesting, awesome interactions with characters. Mm -hmm. So I started playing this game. I don't, I don't want to, like, spend too much time on it, but I started playing this game, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm, if I'm digging this as much as I thought. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a really key moment happens with one of the, the main, like, starting characters, mm -hmm. and it totally changed my perspective on what this is. Okay. Like, this is really awesome. Like, it's, like, a super awesome character story, and the interactions that your character has with all these side stuff mm -hmm. is fantastic. I fucking love it. Okay. It's so detailed and deep. It's awesome. I, I'm having a really good time when it's not crashing. It feels, I mean, it's, it's an RPG, right? Like pe the, the definition has kind of been, uh, swapped around a bunch over time. And sometimes you think RPG is going to be the thing where you select attack from a list, you know, and like cloud yeah. does his limit break, but like, this feels like it's very much an RPG, probably kind of similar to fallout, maybe more than other action games, I'm sure. But like, it, may, it would make sense that it wouldn't it wouldn't feel right until you feel comfortable in it. Like until you can like the, until the, the mind meld happens where you Omar feel invested and like, feel like your goals as a player are aligned with the goals in the game. It's not, it's not sisterhood of traveling pants where you just try them on and they work. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, so I guess that makes sense. But man, just looking at that world, like how much of that stuff matters though? Cause that's, that's the problem uh, I, mean, I have. It not a whole lot, honestly. Mm -hmm. I feel like because there's your main quest lines and then there are side jobs. I've been doing some of the side jobs, but really, like, it's mostly the mainline stuff and then those characters you meet in the mainline that you have really interesting stories with, mm -hmm. and that's the stuff that I've been following down. That's why I think like my uh, my what it, whatever the the thing was in 60% through one and only 15 and 20 through the other, mm -hmm. you know? Gotcha. Yeah. It's just, it's really the things when it, it's just stuff on a map. Like I know people consider Assassin's Creed black flag to be like one of the best Assassin's Creed games. I know, I know people that love it, but that was like actually where I kind of stopped with the whole series because the map was so littered with stuff and then you would go and then you would like spend 15 minutes getting it. And it was literally just an orb. So that way your counter would go like 16 out of 500 to be 17 out of 500. Like, you know, and there's stuff like that in all those games. But I always like when it builds something. The the new Spider-Man game, I guess not the new one anymore. The PS4 Spider-Man. Not feel, Miles Morales. I feel oh, like yeah. did a really great job. I haven't played Miles Morales yet, but did a really great job of putting stuff on the map. But it all kind of like 
added towards something, you know? Like, it, each one was kind of like a mini campaign that you were embarking on. So. I think... I think that's just because we're older, right? And we have jobs. Like Maybe. if I were a young kid and I had like limited income mm-hmm. and this was the game I was going to buy, I would be all about like, oh, there was just two oh, of yeah. that same dude right For there. For sure. What's that? Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. what's They're the identical. most? There, there's, two of the same, <laughs> <laughs> there's two of the same guy. Um, They're brothers. Like <laughs> the, most, the most time I can spend in a game is, what, is where I find value. And now to me, it's like, the experience of playing it, not the length that I play yeah. it, that I find value in because I don't have enough time to go hundreds of hours in the same game. Cause I'll never play anything else. Yeah. Part of me just wants to get it done. Lindsay. Yeah. Lin- Honestly, yeah. I mean this game, like I, it looks like a game that I would like. I love, you know, fallout. I love th- these RPG type games, mm-hmm. but for that exact reason of that, I, I am the kind of person where I want to play a lot of the game. Like I want to be in it for hours and I don't have time right now. Mm -hmm. So it's like on my list, but it's not for me right now. Yeah. I mean, I think it also came out and don't have time. (laughs) Some people were pretty adamant, like this might not work for you. (laughs) You know, like, so if there's any sort of, the the irony is that Lindsay has a slot machine rolling right now, but when it comes to (laughs) playing a video game, I don't want to gamble, you know, like I want it to be like a confirmed experience. Yeah. 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 I, don't know. You know, I mean, uh, I, like you're talking about getting lost in games and stuff. Like there was just uh, like playing Ark in those kind of survival ish games mm-hmm. is oh, yeah. where you lose yourself for hours and hours and hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm and, and, you know, related to this and last week where we Jacob and I were comparing games and how we play games. Like I'm still deep into, you know, a new game that just came out for me, which was is World of Warcraft. So when I was thinking about should I pick up this game? Like, I think it, I would really enjoy it. And I'm like, I can't, I'm still too deep in this other game. So I, yeah. I need some space between the games and then, mm-hmm. and then I'll come <laughs> check it out. Yeah. It's, space between it, the games. Mm-hmm. It is. It's like a show. That's a show title, right? The, the space between do that the games. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's just, it's like, it starts with the last 60 seconds of a gameplay video and then and then it just cuts <laughs> and then to watches you, you like yeah, go to the bathroom the take a shower <laughs> yeah. sleep um yeah it's it's funny like you talk about trying to find games when you're older that that don't necessarily fill your time with too much stuff i i've been playing through demon souls and um something i, I never it. thought i would do <laughs> um and yeah omar you beat it right yeah i beat it nice um and i like the idea of completing games and I am I am enjoying it a lot, um, but uh, I went to save my progress, so I was like gonna quit out of the game, and it shows you the time played, and it said thirty five hours, and I was like, "What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing with your life? Thirty five hours you've put into this game, which is like you know most of the games. I feel like I actually have played a lot of games this year, but most of them like are not that long. Um, yeah, really only yeah. So I was a little disappointed with myself for spending that much time in a video game. It's funny how you're on the other side of it now. <laughs> I want my bang for the buck to be as low as possible. I want to find a $5 game on Steam that I can beat that afternoon. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, Is it really, do you like, do you truly consider it a wait? Like, I, I know you're exaggerating oh, no, no, a little no, no, bit, no, but like, no, no. is is it like a waste waste? I don't, I don't know. No. I, entertainment is is a weird thing for me to try to quantify because like, before I got in a weird phase recently in my life, like the last couple of years or whatever, where I was watching way too much TV. I was mm-hmm. just like vegging on TV way too often <laughs> mm-hmm. for way too long. And like, yeah. I don't know. There's to me, that's more mindless, even though I was like, I was, I was taking in stories that I enjoyed. I was watching like quality made content or whatever, mm-hmm. but like it's, it's not interactive in any way. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know. It's weird. I, I struggle it's, with that stuff all the time. It's like, am I being productive right now? But really, I need to like turn my brain off sometimes too. Mm-hmm. But I just, so I guess my, it's like finding the ratio. It's funny because one time, like, you know, when I was like struggling with not feeling like I was doing enough, I, was, I had a conversation with my dad where he's like, you know, there's two kinds of w- ways um, uh, to be sort of like entertained or engaged in like hobbies and or you know just projects and one is very much input where you're just like i'm inputting this Mm -hmm. and i maybe i'm learning a little but i'm being entertained so and you know 
whatever. And then the other is like output where like, you know, you're working on something and you're being productive and maybe video games doesn't necessarily fall into that, but you do feel like it's more participatory, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like, oh, I'm, I'm crafting this w wooden rocking chair, which is definitely way <laughs> more output, but it's, yeah. it's about finding a balance. And so for me, it comes and goes in waves of like, well, I just spent like a week and a half doing nothing but playing Ark. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there'll be like a month where I'll be like, I didn't, I don't remember the last time I played a video game. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, what have I been doing? Yeah. And with this year especially, it's definitely a lot of input <laughs> of like mm -hmm. gaming and television and uh, trying trying to find the balance of doing projects that are going to better yourself. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I love, yeah, I love distracting and entertaining myself any way possible. I, I mean, I'm probably like 50 50 on, there will be times where like, will finish work and then go and i'll just go sit down on the couch and be like i just need 90 minutes of me just sitting here not mm -hmm. thinking like i'm gonna think about things but not focusing on anything and we'll be sitting there for about 15 minutes and then elise will get up and she's like i gotta do something like i have to yeah. i have to i have to accomplish something and i'm like you have literally you were sitting at a desk for 10 hours working all day yeah. Like you can you can let go right now, but it doesn't it do, it's not a same reaction as it is for me. Um, that being said, I do like I do like checking things off a list. Like I love the idea of watching a movie, but maybe a movie that I haven't seen, you know, yeah. Yeah. Or, or if it's a movie I have seen, it's not it's not that I'm just scrolling through. Like, I'm so glad television like is gone for me. Like the idea of turning on a television channel, not know, not being able to choose what's oh, sure, on, and yeah. then just oh, yeah, flipping like a channel, watching linear channel or something. Yeah. I'm I'm grateful so that barbaric. I got. Eric. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful I got all that in in my youth because it's the only reason I can pull up these references and like know <laughs> I like basically can watch back the second half of Shawshank Redemption anytime I want to in my head, you know, because like it just is on, and I love I love being able to do that, especially with movies. Um, but for me now as an adult, I love the idea of checking things off the list. So it's the kind of thing where it's like, oh, well, if I'm going to veg out, I do kind of want to be it to be working towards, even as it's working towards nothing, working towards mm -hmm. vegging out productively. So that way I can at least finish it. So, you know, there have been times where we've been watching a show and we'll get to season three and there's four seasons and then maybe like, even though all four seasons are available, Elise might suggest watching something else and then she'll get caught up watching that show and that'll be the new show. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, we didn't finish the first show. <laughs> I need to go back and finish. The I need to mark it off my list as something that's done. And I kind of feel the same way about video games too. So like you talking about like this, if, if I don't beat Demon's Souls, then I, that 35 hours I'll be like why didn't I do that like why have I not yeah. accomplished that and that's I mean that's been the case with a lot of games like Cyberpunk Fall, uh, Fallout 3 I played a lot of and then something changed in my life and I didn't have time to devote to it and when it came back I was like I don't know there were a thousand quests on my wrist yeah. and I kind of forgot how to even play the game and didn't know where anything was and I was like mm, what a waste what a waste of time. like it's happened so many it happened twice with Fallout it's happened so many times with so many different games and those drive me crazy and the idea of that happening with Cyberpunk is really scary finishing I GTA always, 5 is like one of my greatest accomplishments I always finish those bigger games it's the small ones like I started playing Ori and the Will of the Wisps like mm -hmm. earlier in the summer yeah I haven't finished it but you know I finish games like this where like I played Last of Us 2, I finished that. I played it until mm -hmm. I finished it. Because yeah. because of that exact reason is that if I don't finish it, I know that I'm going to come back and I'm going to be like, what the fuck am I looking mm -hmm. at? Uh, well, I mean, it's yeah. like it's like the, well, I don't know. There's like a narrative experience, right, that you're like a completing in a game like this. Mm -hmm. I guess Ori would have that too, though. I don't know. It. I, I struggle with completing things too. I, I've recently like become more aware of that in myself with mm -hmm. a lot of things, just mm -hmm. my inability, like I, I bounce off of things all the time, uh, be it yeah. for whatever reason. And like being, have, putting a conscious effort into not letting that happen when I feel myself like, Oh, I'm just, you know, like I'm getting lazy and I don't want to do the thing anymore. Mm -hmm. I take a, I take like a day break or whatever. And then like, okay, I need to get back into this or I don't want to bounce off of everything that I, I have going. I don't want 
you know, 15 different half finished things. Like you said, James, like that, that like, I I don't know. It's now an anxiety there instead of like the time that it takes to do the things is not the anxiety driver anymore. It's like not completing them. Yeah. It's, it's tough. It makes it, it makes that time feel, feel wasted if I don't finish the thing, I guess. Yeah. And I, I also, I, I will say, ad- admittedly, this is, ba- we treat this as a therapy session. Everyone could be our therapist on this. Yeah. I, I'm admittedly not good at, at, at prioritizing some of those things. Like the idea of, I just, I just finished watching, it was, it was three sessions and I watched The Witches, The New Witches by Robert Zemeckis. And I was like, I, I was like, I got it. And tonight's the night. Like, it, and it didn't happen over the course of three evenings. I watched part, or like watched the first third, watched the second third, and then I think it was like two or three nights. But I felt like I got it. I have to finish watching Witches. Like, I didn't even like it that much. I mean, it was like yeah. way, <laughs> way worse in my opinion um, than the uh, than the old one, the original. Yeah, the old movie. one, I I kind of liked. I remember liking as a kid, being it, terrified just, of the witches, but yeah. Yeah, it has so much, the old one had so much personality despite feeling like a bland hallmark made for TV movie. It had had so much under the surface. Um, And this one felt like it was so bombastic, but then had nothing. Like it was just like a a old car with a fresh coat of paint. Um, (laughs) Sorry, HBO Max. I know we're Warner Brothers employees, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, And so. But I still felt like I needed to finish it. I was like, I need to finish it. That way I've watched Witches and then it's done and then I haven't done it. But yet I have like a screenplay that's half finished, (laughs) you know, like, you know, like when it's like, why can't I devote that energy there? Even when you were not finding it like that enjoyable or you're like, this is not going to be valuable to me. You you felt like you had to finish it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, like what's, even what's the cutoff then? What's the cutoff for not enjoying something to where you feel okay dumping it? Well, I guess, I guess, with movies at least, it's a passive experience, so it doesn't really require. Like, if if the goal was to push a giant, well, this is a bad example because it sounds like exercise. But say I hated exercise, mm-hmm. and and someone just said <laughs> you have to push this giant boulder up a hill, and I was like, this sucks, and I didn't want to do it. Then I would probably be more inclined. But I guess watching something is yeah. But is you're very better passive. for it after you push the boulder. Like you're stronger, you know. And like, what yeah. do you get from finishing something Witches? that you're not enjoying? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's a weird like affirmation. I guess you know it comes out and it has reviews and people have a, have uh, opinions. Oh, you can- on it right you can say, and then oh yes you that's right wanna or know, that's wrong yeah yeah you want to know where you land on those opinions like you know speed racer comes out and you say and everyone says speed racer sucks you want to watch it to prove all of those people wrong in your head <laughs> but witches comes out <laughs> and, it, and people say it, it's not good and then you watch it and you go nah everyone is right like and i will say it starts <laughs> out and like the nostalgia and the excitement that i have because i'm a big fan of Roald Dahl's books those are basically the books that were read to me when i was a kid um, and the movies I grew up with, like that was like a big part of my childhood. I was like excited for the prospect of a filmmaker I like making a story that I like, um, but it didn't it didn't pan out for me. So I guess there was that initial motivation, that thrust of excitement. But then, yeah, by the end of it, I was like, oof, <laughs> like <laughs> what else could I have done? Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing, and and yeah. I, I actually feel kind of similar, Lindsay, about like sometimes the bigger games are easier to get through. I mean, GTA yeah. five was a beast. And I remember there was a point where I sat down and I said, no, I'm going to finish this. Like, I don't even <laughs> care about what happens to Trevor. Like, yeah. I'm going to finish this game. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, it is. It's kind of it is interesting how some of those smaller games get away from you. I think that. I don't know how much you guys have messed around with Game Pass, um, but I That's am. That's how I was, playing, I, should, yeah. I was playing Ori on that through Game Pass. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be a big bridge for me, though, because, like, yeah, I, I started playing Ori on Game Pass, and then Elise was like, well, we should play it together. So we'll, I'll, give her, I, I'll give her time. I'll give her a couple months, and if it, we don't play it together, then I'll just sneakily play it without her knowing. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but there's other stuff like Yakuza... Yakuza Zero, a game that I probably wouldn't just like sit down and like sit down on a couch and turn on a console to play this game that's, you know, been out for several years. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I can do it on the toilet, then maybe. 
there's a chance. <laughs> you know? There's hope there. Um, but yeah, the switch. I, the switch has been a big part of that too. Like anything that yeah. you can just like grab, sit down, yeah. and multi- like watch while also doing something is like that's, yeah. that's perfect for me. I was I was thinking the other day like would I have played Hades as much as I did mm. if it weren't on Switch? Because I had it when it came out on on preview or whatever on Epic. Mm-hmm. And I played it a couple of times or whatever and then didn't really look at it anymore. And, and that mm-hmm. was earlier in the in the dev cycle for it. So it wasn't quite the same game that it is when it came out, came out. Mm-hmm. But like, I think the Switch absolutely opens up the opportunity for me to do more things like that that I wouldn't normally find the time for. Because mm-hmm. I can I can do it in my... Even if I'm not like actually watching TV at the same time or whatever, doing like a second screen experience... For mm-hmm. some reason, like it being a smaller, you know, smaller on the switch or whatever makes me want mm-hmm. to do it. Yeah, I I played a ton of Hades and I'm probably I, I still often think, oh, maybe I should go back to Hades. Now I'll do it tonight. Like and I have um, because I haven't completed, completed it. Like even though I've escaped probably like 15 times or some 15, 20 times now, um, I still haven't there's still more story unfolding in the game. So I don't feel really? like Damn. I've completed it. Yeah. There's so much, was, there's so much in that game. It, I thought the number was 10. Didn't you have to do it 10 times? I don't, I think I've done it. feel like I've done it way more. I had to, it got to the point in the game where I had to stop escaping. I had to like actively fail because every time you escape, it basically loads in the way the dialogue and stuff works is it loads in new, like, dialogue responses to where you are in that stage in the game. Mm-hmm. And so you basically have to like die like four or five times to reset that. And like, so like basically things will get queued. Apparently the way it works is, is dialogue stuff gets queued. So say you're trying to unlock a, a super weapon or something like that. And you're like, I just, Achilles just needs to tell me what I need to do to unlock the weapon. I just need Achilles to tell me to do what, what I need to do to unlock the weapon, but he keeps talking about the story. So what you have to do is you basically lose a bunch in the first world. And then it knocks that story thing down further down the queue and then pushes up the things that you need to say every single time. Um, but I did, I played all, all that time on Hades. It was me sitting down on a computer playing it on Epic. Um, so I did actually play a ton of, ton of, Hades on the computer so but I uh, the whole time I was thinking if I got it on switch it would have been just it would have been nonsense it would have been brutal because I play, <laughs> played Hades around the same time I was playing Mario Galaxy again and so only one of those probably would have gotten done <laughs> it been Hades for sure somebody Mario in the chat Galaxy. said it took me around eight months to finish Witcher 3 and I just want to say that that is one game that I have started and not finished Oh yeah, yeah. Was it was list. it just because of the things that we're kind of mentioning, like something happened in life, or were you not feeling it? Yeah, I think it was mostly something happening in life. I think like I'd been playing it through for streams and some like streams for another company that I was working with, mm-hmm. and when I stopped doing that, I was like, okay, well now I'll just play it on my own time when I get a chance. Mm-hmm. And I just never did. Never did. Yeah, doing stuff yeah. doing stuff for work and having it scheduled that way kind of ruins it for everything else so totally maybe part that. of it i i do feel like it's a game that if i go back to i might just i might have to start it over yeah that's scary though that's, isn't that scary yeah because it's like it's five years ago game. that i was doing that yeah i never touched it kind of for the same reason i was like you know everyone it, it is a positive for the game i want to emphasize that it is a positive thing when you when you tell someone how much there is to do in the, in the world and the game and it's fantastic and you've played it for eight months, that is a positive. But for <laughs> me, it is terrifying. And, and that's kind of what happened with Witcher. People were like, which with Witcher three, they were like, Oh my God, like I'm caught in this game. The experience is wild. Or you'll see stuff like, you know, pe- it came up on Reddit for a long time with either funny or cool things that people were doing that would make it to the front page of Reddit. And I'd be like, oh my, this I don't even recognize this from other things I've seen in the game. And that's scary to me. Um, I, f- I feel like with the exception of this year, every time that I've had a lot of time to dedicate games um, and I 
had those, I get nostalgic and I think about those moments of like, oh man, that was so fun when I just like day in and day out and I, I just, I played forever. Mm-hmm. And then I think about like the bigger picture of what else was going on in my life. And I'm like, oh yeah, I was really miserable. <laughs> and this mm-hmm. was the only thing that I enjoyed during that time. And like that also plays into why I remember the game and those mm-hmm. memories so fondly is because it was like bringing me so much joy. And I was spending way too much time playing the games, but mm-hmm. um, I, it's yeah. hard to differentiate that sometimes yeah. for myself. Yeah. For me, that's World of Warcraft. It's it's crazy to me that you're playing that game now because that was, I was playing when it was, you know, still OG style, like where the classic is when it was sure. for real or whatever. Yeah. And it was like 40 man raids and I had a clan or not a, a guild and we were raiding yeah. and we we're doing all this stuff and I was in charge of all the warlocks and the thing. And like, I think back to that time, it's like, holy shit, I spent so much time. I went out of my way to spend so much time playing that game. And Mm -hmm. now when I look back of it, I think like, Oh shit. I, I wasted, I feel like I wasted my life doing that stuff. Like I wasted my, my youth a little bit on that game. And it really makes me like kind of (laughs) unhappy. I I mean, I, I mean, I, I totally get that. I feel like I may be lucky. Whereas when I first started playing it, I, I had a lot of other really cool things going on in my life. And so I'm like, oh yeah, I started playing that game, but also like I was playing softball every Sunday and I would come home and like, then I would get on World of Warcraft. And then like later that week I would like hang out with friends and be like, yeah, we'd go home from the bar and be like, Hey, you want to get on for a little bit? And like that for me was like my memory from starting that game. There have been times where, I was playing it too much because I was like, I'm just going to work out because I, no, I live alone, I'm poor, I got nothing else to do. But mm-hmm. I think because I still have that tie to it being like this really cool, fun thing that I started to do, I that's why I always come back to it. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't have that. It was more like, <laughs> oh, th- that was like a depression era for me or whatever. Yeah. You know? Like I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing anything outside with other people. I was just communicating with like, the 40 ish people on the, on the, on yeah. the thing when going like I would leave work and drive home as fast as I could so I could sign on and do all this stuff with them or whatever, you know, like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, such a weird time. Um, I, uh, I've spoken about it before at length, but Marvel puzzle quest, it's interesting when you have these things that are like in your life, they, so they just recently, I still play Marvel puzzle quest. I'll preface this by saying that I still play Marvel Puzzle Quest um, every daily. day. Still, daily, okay. daily. I, I have logged in and gotten the daily reward every single day, um, and that includes any like international travel, all kinds. Like I find a way to connect to internet and then <laughs> log in to this game and play it every single day, even if it's like, oh, I know when the time takes over because it's not at midnight. I know when the time takes over, so I'll do like technically twice in one day and then take the next day off, but it's still, it's still part of the 24 hour cycle. And they, they, I will say this, I picked good because for a game that is a match three, they have done so many updates. It's unrecognizable basically like other than still being the match three game, but like anyone who's played for a while, it's like there it's unrecognizable. There's so many characters. I have all of them. And and like there's just so much in this. There's so much in this game. I can't imagine starting today, but yeah. they keep unlocking like new features because the game has just become this beast and they have to figure out a way for people to be able to like wrangle it. And they just recently unlocked this thing called milestones, which are, you know, long tail you're playing the game and more than just daily rewards, like you're accomplishing these long tail goals. Like, you know, you roster 50 characters, you roster 60 characters, you know, you have a four star, you have a five star. And when you hit these goals, you basically get to reap these rewards. And they just dropped this feature last week. And it counts your progress for most of those things up to where you are now. And so I had to reap the rewards of my entire playtime. And it was like, just like claim, 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 claim. And it just went on. It was like 20 minutes of me hitting claim for these things that I've, big quotation marks, accomplished in the game. And it felt pretty amazing. It felt pretty rewarding. And I was actually able to use it. Like the game is essentially a machine at this point. 
unless they change something majorly, like the pace at which they release things is a pace at which I will never fall behind. I will always manage to at least get the character and have the covers for the character so I can use the character. Like I'll never fall behind ever again. And then there's a super rare five star tier, which that's that's still kind of luck of the draw if you're gonna end up with one of those or not. But then there's a slightly lower tier, which is like four stars. And that's like, it's it's just a matter of time that I'm, it's not if I get that character full, it's just when, like it's probably gonna be two or three weeks or something like that of regular play. Mm. Um, but I recently crossed another thing because I play daily and it shows you how many days you've played. And I was like, when the milestones happen, I was like, man, I've been with this game for so long. It's crazy, like four years. Like it's wild to think about having played a, a game for four years. And then I counted the days, I did the math, <laughs> and it wasn't four years. <laughs> it wasn't four years. Uh, today is day uh, 2,577 which divided by 365 puts me at 7.06 years of daily play of this mobile game. But in my head, I was like, four years, that's a long time. That's not, that's not play time. That's just concurrent no, days that you sign Concurrent up. days. Okay. Concurrent day. I, have, I have unlocked 2,577 daily rewards. So that means that you divide that at seven years. And I think, I think the game only came out a little before I started playing. So the game I think is only like seven and a quarter years old and I've been playing for <laughs> 7.06 years. Um, so that's Lindsay, wild. thoughts, I'm praise, in, anything? I'm impressed, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's quite impressive. Yeah. To, Cause I mean, I remember the first day that I like forgot to go to the, you know, Bell ATM in Animal Crossing, and I was like, "No, my like seventy day mm -hmm. streak. streak is over." Yeah, and then, and then I after honestly, the day that that happened for me was the day that I stopped playing that much. So it does break it you is, out of the habit. Yeah. It does. Yeah, I mean, like, how much of of what you're doing, James, is just to preserve that streak? That That's right. the thing, though. I'm still into the game. Like, I of course, like at minimum, when we when we were really busy traveling a lot and stuff. I would I would make it a point to be like I just got to get my daily reward. Just keep that keep that going. But now like I, it's kind, like I said it's kind of a machine. I still enjoy doing the match 3. They release new characters like every couple weeks and so I always get them because of the machine that I've built in the game, the engine. And so it's never like it's never like oh I get bored because there's always a new thing for me to basically experience in the game over time. I spend no money on it. The, the engine the engine has moved beyond the need for financial contribution. If I paid into the game, it wouldn't help me <laughs> because <laughs> I've already created something so efficient. Um, but uh, I still really enjoy the match three aspect of it. And like even those milestones like basically gave me the in-game currency to unlock a bunch of like other characters that I didn't really like have usable. And that's, so now I'm like building new teams and like, Making stuff like that, I don't know. Which we had, we had a I think it was a ad sales deal. Did did we ever do that video? Yeah, we did, right? With the the Marvel yeah. Strike Force, I was yeah, playing yeah. that for a little while too, because like we, I had to play the game to do the ad sales stuff, and then, mm -hmm. but then eventually, it kind of, it was kind of the thing, like yeah, Lindsay, you said where I just didn't log in one day, and I just kind of didn't go back to it. It's too much, too much to juggle. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that I can maintain. And I also I also study Spanish every single day. That is, uh, well, I will say something productive that I do. Um, that is I do. that is That's something good. that you talked about a while ago. That I was like, uh, I need to fucking do that. I need to like get in and start like reteaching myself how to speak clearly mm -hmm. in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's I, definitely so a funny. skill that I I haven't kept sharp. Yeah, I literally I was just thinking bad. about that this morning because I was sharing these videos about, um, you know, the I sent it to I think you know, a couple of people, but the video of the guy who's talking to his grandma who speaks like five different languages. And I, I was like, I really need to either try to relearn French and like literally just learn how to speak it. Or the fact that I live in Southern California, maybe I should learn how to actually speak Spanish. Cause I know mm -hmm. them probably the same amount, even though one has five mm -hmm. years and one has just me self teaching myself. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, that's something that I really want to do. You want to speak Spanish together? We can. We can do a little yeah. immersion. Not right now. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> not, not right now. Well, I will say, I, I like, I have Duolingo no streaks, hu huge long Duolingo streaks as well. But like, I don't, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> the, the, the problem with Spanish is that I feel like you need that extra step. You need that instruction or that either that immersion. And you can you study all you want to. Speak it with, yeah. So, like, I have I, I do language. vocabulary exercises. So I have a pretty a, a pretty big for a non Spanish speaker Spanish vocabulary that you show me a word and I can tell you what it means, or you ask me a word and I can sure, maybe yeah. pull the Spanish for it. But like piecing it all together is like such a different beast. conversational Spanish is another yeah. conversational any foreign language is like yeah totally foreign different. language. What what do you guys think? What would happen if YouTube had a like concurrent viewer counter? So if you logged in every single day or every single upload that a channel put out that it goes like dink and it counts. It's like you've watched Funhouse like every day you have a Funhouse streak. It unlocks a badge or whatever. Like I feel like that would be really effective. It's a little manipulative, but I feel like it would be <laughs> Weren't really Weren't they doing effective. that before? Wasn't that part of like the YouTube gaming thing? There was like achievements and stuff built into it. I thought, am I making that up? I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I mean, there's, there's stuff like memberships. You yeah. can, like join yeah. channel memberships that unlock it, things at different tiers. But I'm just thinking like just Puget. No, just watch like basically the the free free to watch kind of model of like, yeah, yeah just watch it. And then but if you watch it enough, it'll unlock things. People will find ways to hack it anyway. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> there'll be immediately absolutely. a Chrome extension that lets you type in whatever number of days. And then it's like, oh, yeah, someone's <laughs> been watching Funhouse for three thousand five hundred and fifty five days. That's weird. Yeah, it, it plays long. every YouTube video <laughs> at the same time or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that'd be interesting. Well, I that I I'm glad we kind of got on off onto a tangent on that thing, but we have to, we are almost bur we're burning through the time, and we have to hear a word from our sponsor. And when we come back, uh, we want to hear from you guys. So feel free to ask us some questions in chat. We're still gonna kind of uh, shoot the shit about things and and what we're doing and what we're looking forward to for 2021 um but yeah throw some throw some questions in chat and then we'll we'll cherry pick some of theirs out of there and then of course special segment always coming to you from james Wilms. we'll see you right after this ad break this holiday season the best deal in wireless can be found at mint mobile right now when you switch to mint mobile you can buy any three month plan and get another three months for free as the first company to sell premium wireless service online only mint mobile lets you safely order from home and maximizes your savings with plans starting at just 15 dollars a month john smith is a big proponent of mint mobile he saves anywhere from 40 to 60 dollars a month if, if you want to save, save like Smith. I always say Mint Mobile eliminates the traditional cost of retail and passes those savings along to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven day money back guarantee. So switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. And like I said, for a limited time, buy any three month Mint Mobile plan and get three months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash dude. That's mintmobile.com slash dude. And cut your wireless savings bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash D-U-D-E. Thank you, Mint Mobile. This episode is brought to you by Full Sail University. Located just outside of Orlando, Florida, Full Sail University offers associates, bachelors, and master's degrees designed for the world of filmmaking, music, gaming, art, and technology. They offer both online and on-campus courses. These programs are accelerated so you can earn your degree in half the time. Each degree is immersive and hands-on, so you can learn your craft using the same tools and technologies found in the industry. Plus, alumni can come back at any time to audit classes throughout their career and further their lifetime learning. Super valuable when you're always trying to adapt to new skills. Full Sail grads have gone on to do big things, from mixing hit records to working on major Hollywood films, even winning Oscars, Grammys, and more. Plus, enrolled students receive a laptop along with industry software at deep institutional discounts. 
To learn more about Full Sail's programs as well as potential scholarship opportunities, visit fullsail.edu slash dude soup. That's fullsail.edu slash dude soup. And we are back. We have about, what do we got, like 15, 20 minutes left? Dang, um, right? That was a lot. That was fast. Yeah, I know. We're burning through it. I was really, well, I was like watching you play whatever you decided to do of just kind of like motorcycling around the yeah, cyberpunk just... world, taking pictures of graffiti. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a side quest. There's, there's all these like graffiti tags or like tarot cards uh, they're, they're associated to in the world. And there's like, there's 20 of them for me to go take pictures of. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, furthers a story with one of the side characters that I really like. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, feel, it felt like a good thing to do. Just puts around the world. Yeah. Yeah. This. I would it does watch. Look really cool. I would watch. Maybe what I need to do is I need to watch people play completionist activities in video games that I don't want to fully complete. Like, I just want to do the main story of cyberpunk, but I want to watch Omar just quietly with chill music like no commentary necessary, just kind of like surf around the world and grab the thing so I can see what happens when you find all the riddles in Batman. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> when you find exact, that was like almost exactly the, the example I was going to use too. <laughs> Cause like all of those things were like, they were fun for a minute. And then it was just like, man, I have so many of these things that I have to go try to do. Yeah. I'm just going to look up the ending on YouTube. <laughs> but looking at the ending feels like cheating. I feel like if I watch, cause like when I've done long play watches of video games, I feel like, I've participated in that more than when I watch the end of a video game, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if I, I watch I, some I get guy that. find, do the most efficient way possible, find all of the riddles in Batman, then I have done it as well. We've worked together, <laughs> they and I. Um, okay, so real quick, I just want to talk. We talked about what we've kind of, how we've been surviving 2020 through these games and stuff. But I wanted to ask you guys, what are your 2021 what what are you hoping for? And your answer can't just be to hug another human being because that's not <laughs> more in more in more detail. What are you kind of hoping for? Um, I, I mean, I, I mean, that's obviously my first answer. Something like that is I want to see people. Um, as far as like personal goals, I, I want to have a less cluttered lifestyle. I was talking about this earlier. I accumulated some junk in 2020 because. I was like, I'm home and I'm therapy shopping or, you know, oh, impulse buy this thing I saw on TikTok happened a lot. So I have a lot of junk that I accumulated. So one thing that I'm going to do in the new year and probably even over the next few weeks get started is sort of paring down my life. And I'm not a minimalist by any means, but I prefer like open floor and like not having crap all over my desk. And this year has been hard to maintain that when working Mm -hmm. from home. Like there's just stuff on my desk always. And my home desk never used to be like that. So it's like, ah. So um, I'm going to like purge items and go through a whole, I don't know, thing with that, I Mm -hmm. think. Yeah. It's one of my goals because I feel like it would make me happier. Yeah. You you suggested something before we started about that you you take a photo of something. Yeah. That is like sentimental, but you don't necessarily want. So I actually saw that on another podcast. Um, I think it was a minimalist podcast. And one of the guys was like, well, you know, minimalism is such a great idea to like not have things cluttering your visual, like visually. Mm -hmm. Um, But what do you do with something that's maybe a gift from somebody that you're like, wow, thank you. Like, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But I don't need these things in my life because in the long run, they'll be more for me Mm -hmm. to worry about. Yeah. Uh, so he suggested taking a picture of some things, you know, say that I don't want this, which I, I want it. I still want this. I'm like, say I don't want this fallout <laughs> bobblehead. It's a bad start. It's a bad start if this is on your need list. <laughs> Honestly, this is probably something that's going to go in a picture and whatever. Okay. Um, you put it, you take a picture and, you know, keep it on your phone or whatever and then donate all the things or sell the things. And then um, he suggested making like a coffee table book out mm-hmm. of, you know. And if you can remember something about it, write a little blurb about it or just be like, I got it in like a loot crate in 2015, Mm -hmm. whatever. Um, So I have pictures of stuff that I got rid of two years ago and I have not done the book yet Mm -hmm. (laughs) one day. But as long as I'm doing the part of like taking the picture and getting it out of my 
environment mm-hmm. because I am a I'm a big believer of like a clean space, clean mind, happy mind. Gone but not forgotten. That's like exactly. the perfect example of gone but not forgotten. It's there um, it takes up less space. Real quick, we have a question from Gay Millhouse. Has uh, you guys don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but has drug use or drinking habits changed in the last nine months since everyone has been chilling at home? I'm kind, of, um, I'm kind of only a social drinker anyway. Like, I don't really. Yeah, me too. Like, I was I was literally just thinking of that this morning because I was going through my fridge and I have some beer in there that's been sitting there for a long time. Mm-hmm. It's just like I haven't been drinking alcohol at cart? all while we're. I had, there is cart? some mango cart there. There's I some passion, fruit, too. passion, <laughs> <laughs> it, but it's been sitting there forever thinking like, oh, I guess like I, I. At one point in my life, I considered myself a connoisseur of like beer or maybe some like scotches or whatever. But like, mm-hmm. really, I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. It's not really something I do, I guess, because I haven't been doing it these the last nine months, really, because mm-hmm. there's not a social reason to do that. Yeah. Um, drug use and stuff like that. Nah, nah, I haven't really ch- changed at all. <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel like that. That <laughs> high, that, at like, the, high at 9 a.m. High at 9 a.m. Yeah. Re- re-up at, uh, at Just 2. Like the I know how days. it is. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, a couple times a week or something, you maybe before mm-hmm. going to bed, hit hit the vaporizer or whatever, but like it's not really anything. I don't know. It's not it's mm-hmm. not like a I don't I don't feel like it's a medication for depression or something like some people mm-hmm. feel that kind of thing as. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I did, that it was it's a weird thing to have It's weird that I was thinking about that literally this morning, like alcohol consumption. Mm-hmm. I just don't I just don't anymore. Yeah. Lindsay? I would say that it's been up and down. Um, I was also a very social drinker, but I also like a glass of wine at home. Mm-hmm. But there are those lines, especially when this year it has been like a tougher moment of like, well, I got this bottle of wine. And then the next day you're like, what? did I drink the whole bottle of wine? And, mm-hmm. and you're like, shit, guess I did. Um, and it's something that you definitely have to pay attention to if you are a drinker. And that is like a vice that you go to. Mm-hmm. Um so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm oop, not like, oop, oh, oop. that person's dead. Um, I am not <laughs> like, yeah, a casual drinker. I'm not the kind of person who's like, I just want a beer with dinner. Like, that's not, I've never, I don't think I've ever felt that way. I will say, I feel like I've probably not bought. Not with like some tacos? No, nah, not really. No, it's weird. Like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm so boring. I'm like, oh, you know what sounds good right now? A nice cold glass of water. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and I've just. I think for my sanity's sake, tried to maintain some semblance of routine with like meals and stuff. So like yeah. I have my protein mix for breakfast. I have my protein mix for lunch. And then with dinner, I have like a green, like basically green powder, veggie powder that I mix in with a tall glass of cold tequila. water. Oh. And, and, a, and a, just a <laughs> hint of tequila. Um, and then that's kind of like my go-to dinner beverage. Um, and then other than that, during the day, I'm just going to be probably drinking water. So like, I've just never felt that way. I will say I have bought more beer during this quarantine than probably ever before in my life because I've started using it to cook. I've been what? using it oh. in like instant pots. I keep to, like, coming back to the same spot. Sorry. <laughs> to, <laughs> use it to cook, not to yeah. cope. Yeah, yeah. I've been using it to cook. So like put stuff in like instant pot and like, you know, slow cooker or things like that to make yeah. like shredded chicken or like, you know, different different recipes. So weirdly I have done that, but like, yeah, not not um not really any drunk sessions or anything like that i mean even before then i would only get drunk at events like if if the three of us were were like things were fine and we're like hey we're gonna go let's go to vegas this weekend and like hang out i would probably get smashed because that to me sounds like a fun event that's the first thing that's on our list you know Uh we're we're going to vegas we're hitting the slots (laughs) we're getting smashed yeah that sounds like a fun eventized thing the idea of being yeah. like kind of tipsy and walking around with your friends like in Vegas is like sounds really fun. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of like, I mean, I don't really do any other drugs, but like pot, I guess. Um, I like there have been like maybe a couple times where I'm like, I need to escape and then just like <laughs> try to get really high. But it's probably like, I mean, that probably doesn't happen until like 10 or 11 p.m. anyway. And so sure, I yeah. spend 90 percent of it being asleep. So it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, oh, that's my favorite is just like, <sighs> yeah. 
I can't, <laughs> I can't like get high in the morning and be like, I'm going to be super productive. I'd be like, what time is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've no, never really understood that. Po- yeah. I don't know. I don't Wake know how people bake. do that. Like, yeah. Like just functionally high all day long. No, I remember lots of people that I grew up with were like that. Like, would go through, you know, all school or work or whatever and just be functionally high all the time. I just, I don't mm-hmm. understand. I don't oh, know no, how no. they were doing that. I mean, in my early 20s, I definitely could do it. I, would, I wouldn't be doing it and going to work or trying to be, like, in school. I would do it and be at home and be, like, productive, like, cleaning and stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I can't oh, do yeah. that anymore. <laughs> I would yeah. never be able to go and be really high and then be like, I'm going to work now. No, yeah, yeah. absolutely not. <laughs> this is that not happening? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Unknown Mayo, have you done any digital social ga- gatherings with drinking? Like your drinking game show, but off duty. Uh, had a blast with friends playing games while drunk over Discord. Um, I mean, yeah, we've, we, I feel like we've done some hanging out a little bit. I know that I've, Elise and I have done some like watch parties, but I don't really feel like, the drinking part never is seems to factor in for me um, with that stuff. I'm not like, hey, we're doing a watch party. You're, you're, I'm talking to you on a screen while we're both watching a Christmas movie or something like that. I'm gonna get drunk, like, because mm-hmm. because to me that feels like that could go real wrong, real fast. Yeah. Like they're not actually there. They can't look out for you or whatever. And at a certain point, the laptop tips, and then it's a whole thing. You know, like mm-hmm. seems dangerous, but. What about you guys? No, uh, I think I've done the a last couple hanging. Our thing, you go ahead. Our go video ahead. thing. No, that's what I was going to say. Like the, uh, the video thing, the showdown. That's the last time I remember doing that with people. Mm-hmm. Like, every other time, just a bottle in bed. <laughs> <laughs> just keep. I mean, on I've definitely stand. done stuff hanging out with people like online or whatever, but drinking is just not part of it. Is like I feel like. I can't interact with people properly if I do that. So mm-hmm. I end up just like staring at us. Like if I'm going to be there and be present or whatever, I might as well be like conscious of what I'm doing and interact with people and stuff. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you're the only one, it's hard. I think it's harder to get everyone on the same page socially. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it is 100% harder to get everyone on the same page socially when it's distanced. Like, uh, especially over like a zoom call or, or something like that or discord yeah. chat or whatever. Like everyone feels like you have to come with a similar goal and everyone has to kind of want to have the expectations of getting a similar goal out of it. Um, that it, you know, cause I, I think if everyone's like meeting at a bar, it's kind of different because that's the, the social space. The expectations are there, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's ex- yeah. The expectations are there, but you have to kind of set the expectations in the age of digital socialization. Um, yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be awkward, and you're going to get in trouble, and then you're just going to be like super stoned while everyone else yeah. is just trying to watch a movie, and then you're like, and no one's saying anything. Like it's like it like it's going to be yeah. like the worst version of all of that. So. Yeah, you can't be like, everybody want to play a board game and then just start pouring shots like by yourself. You're like, what, you guys didn't know? You're like, yeah. <laughs> no. There there has been, I mean, I, I like looking forward to 2021. I guess for me, I want to take some of the good that came out of it, like some of the good things that happened and really like continue applying those to a better environment. I feel like mm-hmm. Because things have been the way they are, I've tried to be more conscientious about like reaching out to people and like maintaining social contact with people because you're not just going to run into them. Right. And so I know for me, one of my main goals is like when you can run into someone, that doesn't mean that you can't just shoot them a text and be like, hey, what are you up to? Or you want to play a game or like like you want to do something because like there's been a ton of people that I've gotten to spend more more time with quotation marks um, this this uh, year than I ever have before, despite the fact that we're not together, you know, like, yeah, you know, so I mean, like you guys, you guys too, I feel like we're more in contact with each other and text message chains and, and, you know, sharing things on the weekends. And like, even when we did like the discord, all of us playing games and like, like stuff like that was really fun that probably you wouldn't think to do if things Mm -hmm. were normal. Um, But yeah. There's, there's been, I've got, gotten to spend, I've been started an Overwatch team, which is a oh. lot of fun. 
Yeah. An Overwatch team. Yeah. Uh, so there's it's uh, Blaine, Joel Rubin, Andy Cortez, uh, Tam and Lucy. Uh, there's a bunch of people who just like we casually mentioned over Twitter that like, oh, we like playing uh, uh, like Overwatch. But it's like if you think about it, like like Blaine is in Austin, like Joel and I yeah. are in L.A. and they're in San Francisco. And it's like like but we're trying to make it a regular thing where we like play that together, you know? So, yeah. um, let me know and, if you guys ever need a widow maker. <laughs> just by you saying that, I will absolutely never message you. Damn. <laughs> you, you widow main. <laughs> no one ever needs a widow. Uh, yes, I'll message you. I, I mean, yeah, I'm down to play point. anyway. I think it's fun. I, yeah. I've it is fun. been more conscientious. Don't message me. I got puzzle games. She's got at Don't least five puzzle you. games. No one is going to message you. <laughs> Uh-huh. I'll message her to play puzzle games. Um, but yeah, like even participating, like we got to do so um Bill Dewar mentions Valley Folk. Um, like there's a lot of collaborations that I feel like we've gotten to do this year, people we've gotten to work with. Yeah. In Funhouse well, I mean, and even just outside yeah. of Funhouse, like that have wouldn't have happened if we were only looking at who was under the roof of the office, you know? Yeah, yeah, like stuff moving to the internet, it's weird. Like the possibilities were always there, but we were forced to adapt to this stuff. I feel like work is the biggest biggest thing of this. Is like we were forced to adapt to this thing, and now there are endless possibilities of people we can work with when really we yeah. could have been doing that forever. But now yeah. everyone is just like, "Oh, we're all we're all on the internet. Let's uh, you know, somebody's out in Florida or whatever. Let's collab with them and do the thing." Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like it's crazy that it took it took that for us to allow that to be the thing that we were doing. I don't know yeah. what the what the block I get what was you're before. Saying. I mean, the realism is that I guess there's an audience tolerance for it. You know, like there is there is a limiting yeah. factor that like I think some people will go. The, I I I deem this acceptable. You know, I deem this as acceptable because I understand the conditions of things. And then if the conditions were different, they may be like, oh, why? Why? I don't want this person here or whatever. But I think just in general, 2021, we're going to definitely keep that momentum going because it is fun and refreshing for us, I think, as as producers and creators to have new voices and have people that like kind of re-energize us in a lot of ways and help Mm -hmm. us find new new ways to be excited. So that's definitely a pause. Benson's running by the he's lying here and he's running in his sleep. Also, 2020, I've gotten to watch a lot more of Benson running in his sleep because I'm home <laughs> with him all day. And so I'll be grateful for that. Um, so any, I was thinking the yeah, other day, like I didn't know if it was because Bender's getting older that he has more like his like his body doesn't block out the dreams as much as it used to or something. But I feel like I see him having vivid dreams all the time now it's, it's but maybe yeah maybe it's just because i'm dream. there <laughs> it's they're older so they have more to dream omar that's why i always say benson every time you take him somewhere he goes somewhere he's creating new memories so that way he can go there in his dreams and run free Except for bender <laughs> but bender is yeah constantly see his feet moving and his eyes mm-hmm. freaking out or whatever but he does like he does like the little micro barks way more than he used to mm-hmm. yeah benson <laughs> wolves I learned that dogs cannot, they cannot create dream meat, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. All they can do is just yeah. dream of something that happened to them. There you go. But when dogs have nightmares, they're dreaming about past trauma. Aw. How do we know if they're nightmares <laughs> or not? Is he running from something bad or running to something good? We don't know. Oh, God. I should wake him up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do we wake him up? Do I have to wake up Bender every time he's doing, <laughs> making noise? Uh, oh, well, now I'm now I can't enjoy that anymore. Thank you, Elise. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks, Elise. <laughs> um, no, I'm sure it's good. We are almost out of time. This podcast has absolutely flown by. Um, we are almost out of time, but it wouldn't be a James Willems Funhouse podcast if we didn't have one segment that people are calling the most popular thing on the Internet. Cody. And we're all out of time. No. So thanks for. Oh, Cody, shoot. let's roll it. Oh, OK, sorry. <laughs> I can't tell if it's muted for just me or if it's not. I can't hear you <laughs> okay. Yeah. Welcome everyone to Mount Up for Morbius, the biggest podcast segment 
slash its own show that exists within another podcast uh, devoted to the upcoming Sony slash tiny, very tiny, very, very tiny font Marvel uh, film uh, Morbius starring everyone's parentheses favorite Spider-Man villain, Michael Morbius. Um, we know it's the story of the living vampire. His name is Michael? <laughs> yeah, Michael Morbius. Um, and uh, it, you should know this, Omar. I've co- I covered it <laughs> about 10 months ago on this show. Yeah. Um, I've blocked out that time. Sorry. Um, but uh, for those of you who are new to this, welcome. And we expect you to stay for a very long time. This is a, We're covering, we're counting down the weeks, the days, the months, the years at this point. <laughs> to the release of uh, Morbius starring Jared Leto. Um, and uh, and so, you know, not a lot of news. There's not a lot of news. So we found other ways to kind of fill the time and prepare us mentally for it. But, you know, Lindsay, Lindsay, <laughs> I know she pulled oh, out sorry. the phone I there. Just, Focus. Uh, I was just she, checking on my, okay, see so where I need, was. So. Yeah, I just okay. need you to put that down. So, okay. So, um, because... <laughs> It's because there is news. There is oh. news. This is huge. This is such a huge, and it's such a great way to go out for 2020. There is new Morbius news straight out of Tokyo Comic Con is a brand new Morbius trailer presented by Jared Leto himself that was premiered at Tokyo Comic Con, and we are now premiering here again, second <laughs> premiere. Uh, on Mount Up for Morbius. Lindsay, where are your eyes? What are you looking at? Is your phone there? <laughs> are you no. looking down at your phone? <laughs> this is huge. This is huge, guys. So I I have... Now, so obviously we can't play the whole thing because, um, because you know, it's someone else's trailer or someone else's property. So I did have to trim certain aspects of it so we can listen to the trailer Audio listeners, uh, you can listen along with the trailer, but this will be a live reaction from us to the brand new Tokyo Comic Con trailer for Morbius. Cody, can you go ahead and play the file there? And can we make sure we can hear it? Um, Hello to all you wonderful Marvel fans. I can't wait for you to check out my new movie, Morbius. Very excited, coming your way very soon. Uh, In the film, I play a new Marvel character uh, who attempts to cure his but, lifelong so blood disease Jared with Leto. an experimental science. What appears to be some sort in the process, of barn, they turn into a barn, a living like studio apartment. So, uh, studio that's barn a little bit about uh, what's going on. Look his piano uh, on his hair looks so much better uh, than mine. It's gonna be a fun yeah, I was going to say, he has very, very pretty it. hair. Role an is that his normal look, universe. or is he just kind of, uh, is he a chameleon and goes all over the place? So, He's always a chameleon, I'm happy to hear that everybody in Japan Jeremiah. is doing well. Yeah. And that <laughs> ears are yeah. open. Uh, so don't miss Morbius. And, and I've never heard his voice sound like this either. Now, I don't know what happened if he just woke up. But. the trailer. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Perfect shots. Nice. <laughs> so we got a new song. This is a new... What is Moonlight? Like There's an answer to your disease. Yeah, this is... You'll find it. Okay. Okay. Wait. Yeah, yeah, for real, blood disease. Yeah, man. I'm running out of time. I want to see yeah. you okay. That's not as appropriate as Moonlight. That's not exactly legal. You're up to something. What is it? Did he, this uh, did he start himself? Like, my what's his name? The Machinist? He's probably. Yes, that's me. We got a cool I've seen that new remix of the song. Increased strength. Oh, right. shirtless shot. The ability to use echolocation. Purple goo. Teleporting. Oh, he has sonar. They established he has sonar. Got tired of doing the whole Very bat like. Yeah. Okay. What's up, Doc? Oh. Cameo. Oh, Michael Keaton cameo is. What's happening? Is Michael Keaton the Birdman again? Vulture? What's his. Vulture? Yeah, he plays Vulture. Wow. So there you go. 2021. Brand new. You can check. You can find out more info about that at Morbius-Movie.jp if you want to watch more. Mo- I have, you know, I recommend everyone. That was just kind of our live reaction. I recommend everyone going and checking out the full trailer in without freeze frames all over it, so you can really see <laughs> the stuff. But yeah, big big reveals from big takeaways from that. Confirmed that he has sonar. 
Okay. And that's about it. That's all that's new <laughs> in this song. Wait, this wait, song. Michael Keaton? I didn't know about Michael Keaton. That's cool. Well, he was in the first trailer, and if you notice, every single time the mount up for Morbius header plays, that same clip <laughs> it was, is there. I, for, so. some reason, <laughs> for some reason, I, I assume that was kind of a lecture. Oh, God. <laughs> I, thought it was that. Okay. I thought it was one of the lecture. I don't you know why Anthony that was where Hopkins I... Was yeah, in that's what I... There he is, look, right look, there. It looks See? like it... It looks uh, like Anthony Hopkins. No, is that's animal. Vulture. I threw him in as the cameo. I can't believe you didn't realize. <laughs> Why right, did well, I associate that in my head? <laughs> we're going. 2020 is oh going God. out on a high note. We're getting. We're get the the vaccine is getting shipped all over, and uh, and we also got a brand new Morbius trailer. So if you ask me, this is the planet trying to heal itself. Um, so <laughs> what did you, where did you end up at Lindsay? I How ended much? up at 24 million coins. Sorry, it's too close there. And, uh, I was up to 28 at one point and then I j- it was just down at 17 million. And then I hit the oh damn jack ball, the bonus mm-hmm. ball, jackpot, whatever it's called over nice. there. Nice. And then uh, it's a I'm volatile game. So what I let you, it sit there. What did you start at? Uh, it was 20,000 or 20 million. Okay, great. So, so we made a profit. Four and a half mil. We made a made profit. profit and, of little and Vegas you, coin <laughs> chips. All you had to do was leave it open on your phone for a little while. Yeah, I just was like sitting there. <laughs> yeah, something tells me that go. is not the same odds as you would get in Vegas, but still. No. Maybe. Um, I, uh, but, real quick before we end it real yeah. quick there's a game in Vegas if you do go to Vegas and you do want to have something that, that you can sit and play for a long time that you get money back mm-hmm. three card poker oh yeah I love uh, three or no, card no. poker is it three card poker or win lose draw there's one where you bet three times and you can take your bets back and you only have to lose one of your three bets if your oh, okay. hand sucks I think it's huh. called win lose draw actually there's but yeah. well three card poker is similar whereas and you play the different kinds of bets and so you can win the three different ways and so sometimes you don't always lose it all. Sometimes yeah. you lose it all. Oh. Vegas. Yeah, baby. there's one where you That's can Vegas. literally just like uh, I wanna I, I undo that bet and then you can sit okay. there for hours and hours and get drinks. And Make drinks sure you're at the right table because if you try down. to undo a bet <laughs> yeah. somewhere, you're gonna get your hand stabbed. Well, good, good to know. <laughs> I'm trying to think we have a bunch of great stuff. This where this is kind of gonna be uh we're planning a bunch of content to go up over the holidays to make sure that even if we're not in the office on Christmas, you guys get videos and stuff on, on those mm-hmm. days. Um, so there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline so much. So, uh, we got new abandoned wares coming, coming out. Um, at least what do we got? Oh, we have the continuation of our Christmas film house bracket. Um, part two, uh, is a lot of fun. We have three weeks of that. So hold on. Yeah. Part butts. two of three. Nice. Um, and, uh, Super Mario Maker. Oh, it's so good. Uh, tear down, and then also we do have, I believe, at some point, a board game. We do have a holiday board game bonanza that will be coming to you guys uh, soon. So I won't tell. I won't tell you too much about that. Big stream day Friday. Then we also have a big stream day Friday. We're doing a lot of collaborations with people. Mm-hmm. So uh, please come join us. Check it out. Um, thank you to everyone participating in the Rooster Teeth chat, um, uh, joining the conversation, asking us questions, and just helping move the conversations along. Thank you to all the uh, Morbius fans out there for sending me the trailer straight from Japan as soon as it came out. Uh, we would be nothing without the Morbius fans. And uh, thank you to Omar and Lindsay for coming on the coming on the show. Thanks, yeah, James. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. All right, everybody, take care, and we'll see you next week.